You know how you walk into those modern game rooms at a fun park and they have those supersized arcade games like this Batman driving game? Or maybe you're lucky enough to find one of those Star Wars Battle Pod games. You wait your turn in line and finally get your chance to sit down and play the game and think, I sure do wish I could play games like this at home. The good news is you absolutely can using the power of the Techno Parrot emulator. I'm going to show you how to set up and play games like Star Wars Battle Pod and up to 170 other PC based games in just a matter of minutes. Fire up your PC because you're about to level up your setup. And be sure to stay to the end for a special bonus section on how to play your favorite light gun games without having a light gun using the controls you already have on hand. Everything you need to download except for the games themselves is linked for you on my website and I have the link for you in the video description. On this page, scroll down until you see the green download button shown here. To download an all-in-one file that has everything except the games, click on the green download button shown here. Now that you've got it downloaded, let's unpack this all-in-one zip file and see what's inside. Go ahead and open up a file explorer window and open your downloads folder. You'll find the newly downloaded all-in-one zip file here. Right click on it and select extract all. You can extract the contents to their default folder. Once the contents are extracted, you don't need this zip file anymore. Right click on it and click delete to send it to the recycle bin. Now that it's uncompressed, open up the AIO folder. You'll find four things in here. A Microsoft installation file for DirectX. A couple of homebrew non-commercial patch files specifically for Star Wars Battle Pod. A bootstrap installer for Techno Parrot. And you'll find a folder with a series of files from Microsoft that allow you to install Visual C++ to your system. First up, go ahead and double click on the DirectX folder shown here. You'll find the official Microsoft installer for DirectX inside this folder. Double click on that file, and at the UAC prompt that appears, click on Yes to continue. Click on the I Accept Radio button, then Next in the bottom right corner. Before you go through the next step, either check or uncheck Install the Bing Bar, then click Next to continue. Give your system a moment to get the hamster turning in the wheel, and you'll have DirectX installed on your system. Once the install process is complete, come down to Finish and click on it. Go back one level in the navigation structure to the root of the all-in-one folder by clicking the back arrow. Let's get the Visual C++ runtimes installed on your system. Go over to the Visual C++ folder and double click into it. If you're looking for a specific file here that's a batch file, it will run all of the installers for you at one time. It's this file right here called install underscore all dot bat. Double click on this file to start the install processes. The only thing you have to do along this install journey is just keep clicking yes at each UAC prompt that appears and you'll keep seeing this UAC prompt reappear every time an updated version of the Visual C++ runtime is installed to your system. Once all of the runtimes are installed, go back one level in the navigation structure back to the root of the all-in-one folder by using the back arrow. Before you run the TechnoParrot Bootstrapper, you'll need to create a new folder somewhere on your computer. In this case, I'm gonna to go to the desktop and create a new folder by right-clicking, selecting New, and then Folder. I'll name this folder TechnoParrot. You don't have to do anything with the TechnoParrot folder at this point. For now, just go back to the all-in-one subfolder inside your downloads folder. Next up, go to the TP Bootstrapper folder and double click into it. Inside this folder, you're looking for a specific file that's called tpbootstrapper.exe. Locate that file and double click on it. When the UAC prompt appears, click on yes to continue. Okay, I'm going to invert the colors here to make things easier to read. There, that's much better. Take a look along the left side of the screen. See how all of these things say not installed? Here's what you do to fix this. Take a look in the top right corner of the screen and you'll see a browse button. Click on the browse button and you'll see Windows File Explorer appear. Remember that TechnoParrot folder you just created? I'm going to navigate to it from File Explorer so that we can copy over the necessary files into this new folder. Wherever you made yours, click on it and then click Select Folder at the bottom of the File Explorer window. Next up, you'll see a button at the bottom of this window that's called Full Install. Navigate to it and click on Full Install. This will download and install all of the necessary components for TechnoParrot into the folder that you previously created and selected from the Browse function. Once the process is complete, you'll see a pop-up message appear on screen. Select OK to close out the TechnoParrot Bootstrapper. The first time you run TechnoParrot, you'll be greeted with a pop-up message notifying you that it's likely the first time you've run the software, and it'll ask you if you want to set up key emulation settings. You do, click OK to continue. 
You'll get another pop-up window notifying you that you don't have any games set up yet and asking if you want to. Since playing games is the whole point of this thing, go over to Yes and click on it. You're going to get greeted with another screen of low contrast text and a bright white background. We're going to take care of that in just a minute. For now, you can just close out any instances of File Explorer that you have in the background. I think it also makes sense to take the taskbar and minimize it or hide the taskbar so you can easily access buttons at the bottoms of the settings menus coming up. Right click on the taskbar and then select taskbar settings. From taskbar settings, come down to the listing that says taskbar behaviors and left click on it. You'll see some new options drop down underneath this, including a listing that says automatically hide the taskbar. Put a checkbox in this option by clicking the box with the left mouse button and now the taskbar will automatically hide until you hover all the way at the bottom of the screen with the pointer. Now you can close out taskbar options by clicking the red X in the top right corner. I'm going to take a moment here to take the Techno Parrot window and expand it to full screen. Just like that. There, that looks better. Alright, let's take this bright white screen with low contrast text and turn it into something you can read. There's a hamburger in the top left corner. Click on it and you'll see a side cart menu pop out. Come down to the listing for settings and click on it. If you look just below where the mouse pointer is here, you'll see a checkbox with a text listing that says dark mode. Come down to dark mode and click on it. And presto, all of these menus suddenly change from being a huge eye strain to something you can readily read. Once you've made any changes here, come down to save settings at the bottom right corner of the screen and click on it to lock in the change. See how the taskbar gets in the way? This is why I had you take the taskbar and minimize it so that it gets out of the way of trying to click buttons on screen. See, now you can just come down and click on the button with the taskbar out of the way. Otherwise, the taskbar actually covers up some of the buttons in the settings menu and that's problematic. You'll see the same prompt asking you to set up games. Come back up to yes, just like previously and click yes to continue. Ordinarily, I would send you to a website that has a list of all of the available games for an emulator and which ones are working, which ones are partially working, and which ones don't work at all. However, every time that I went to the GitHub to look up the wiki, the GitHub said that there was no content available on that repository. So instead, I'm going to show you all of the games on screen that you can access, and you can pause throughout this part of the video to take a look and see any specific games that you're looking for to see if they're listed as compatible with the emulator. Okay, let's go ahead and add the first game to the emulator. To do this, locate the game from the list of potential games that you can add. They're all available on screen and I just scrolled through all of them so that you could take a look at them. In this case, I'm going to add Star Wars Battle Pod. Click the game of your choice, then navigate under the icon for the game and click Add Game shown here. This is going to take you to your game library. This is a list of any games that you've added to the library since you first set up the emulator. Every game you add has to have settings configured individually for the game. Come over to Game Settings in the blue buttons on the bottom right corner and select Game Settings by clicking on it. The first listing at the top of Game Settings you're going to see is the request for the executable file for the game itself. You'll normally see a clue here as to what file you're looking for. In this case it's called rslauncher.exe, but every game might have a separate type of executable file listed here. To add the file, bring the cursor down below the listing of text. See how if you bring it up to the top it turns into an arrow, but if you bring it underneath it turns into a regular text cursor? Click right here. I have a folder saved on my computer that's called Demo. You're not going to have a demo folder on your computer. I just created this folder for showing off things on YouTube. Wherever you have your game saved on your computer, go to that folder. So in this case, I have the games that I showed off previously at the beginning of the video saved in my demo folder. So I'm going to scroll down through the list of choices in demo until I find the listing for Star Wars Battle Pod. It's right here. Double click on the game that you're loading, in this case Star Wars Battle Pod. If you happen to be loading Star Wars Battle Pod into the emulator while you're looking at this video, that RS Launcher file is going to be under a folder that's called Launcher. In most cases, however, the executable file that you're looking for is probably going to be directly inside the first submenu of the game folder. In other words, once you click on the game folder, it'll be right there. Pro tip here, if you don't know where the executable file is, you can always go up to the search bar in the top right corner and type the name of that file to help you find it. I'm going to go to the launcher folder here and double click into it. I'm going to scroll down a little bit because right underneath these folders, you'll find the listing for rslauncher.exe right here. 
Select the executable file for the game you want to launch, then click on the open button at the bottom of the window to select it. You'll definitely want to use a gamepad to play games like Star Wars Battle Pod. Here's how that's done. I love this 8-BitDo Ultimate Bluetooth Controller. I got it from Stone Age Gamer and I have it linked for you in the video description. It has Hall Effect thumbsticks and Hall Effect analog triggers and it even has a charging dock with an LED light at the bottom. Come up to the drop down shown here. It says direct input and that's what it would use for a controller like this. But if you're going to map like an Xbox controller for example, be sure to select X input here. There are also some options for most games that you'll want to consider while you're here. For example, you can turn on free play so that you don't have to keep feeding quarters or dollar bills or swiping your fun card into your computer every time you want to load credits onto a game. And also, you might want to turn off windowed mode so that you can play the games in full screen. Once you have your settings dialed in, come down to the bottom of the screen to save settings and click on it. TechnoParrot knows that you want to use a controller, but it doesn't know what to do with it yet. Come over to controller setup and click on it. The reason you see options here like test and service is because you're literally emulating an arcade machine and they have switches and buttons for things like going into test mode or service mode for the machine. To configure the inputs to match the inputs for the cabinet of the game you're trying to play, you can click on any one of the listings that has a blank line at the bottom of it. So you can just follow the labels on the left side of the screen over to the blank listing on the right side of the screen and click in it. Then press the corresponding button on the controller that you want to map to that input. Now you can just go through for each of the inputs and select a corresponding button or thumbstick or trigger on the controller to match the action of the control on the game. Once you've matched everything to your liking, come down to save settings in the bottom right corner and click on it to lock in these changes. If you're asking yourself right now, do I really have to do this for every game I add? The answer is yes, because you have to think about it this way. These arcade cabinets are proprietary, and they generally will each have their own unique control systems. All right, you've put in the work. Let's try out a game. Come up to Launch Game and click on it. And sure enough, here's Star Wars Battle Pod running in the emulator. But there's something kind of janky looking about this, isn't there? It's all kind of bent out of shape when you put it on a regular flat screen panel. That's because this game is played inside a gigantic sphere. It uses a projection system to display the images on the wall of the sphere. So if it's not adjusted in terms of how the game is actually formatted, it's going to end up looking weird when it's played on the sphere in the arcades. However, there is a patch for this, and I included it in the all-in-one file that you downloaded. To put it to work, open up File Explorer and navigate back to your Downloads folder. Double-click into the all-in-one folder that you uncompressed. For now, just grab the File Explorer window with these two files in it and drag and drop it over to the left side of the screen and then snap it into place there. You'll need to get access back to the game folder that has Star Wars Battle Pod in it. To do this, go to the folder that has your game folder inside of it. Remember, in this case, it's called the demo folder. So I'm going to open up the demo folder here and then go to the Star Wars game folder by double clicking into it. You're going to find a subfolder inside here and it's called SWARC Game. Locate that folder and double click into it. Finally, you're going to find a subfolder inside here and it's called Cooked PC Console. Find that folder and double click into it. If you haven't already, you'll need to turn on the ability to view file extensions. To do this, go up to the listing that says View shown here and click on it. You're going to see a drop down appear. Scroll all the way down to the bottom of the drop down to More. Hover over More and you'll see a listing that says File Name Extensions. Make sure that there's a check mark here. If there isn't, navigate to it with the pointer, hover over it, and left click on it to put a check mark here. Once you have this enabled, you can just click outside of it to close out these menus. You'll need to locate two specific files and rename the file extensions for them. The first one is called startup.upk. It's this file shown here. Click on the file name and then give it a moment and click on it again. This is going to change the file name into edit mode. You don't have to change the file name, just the extension. So you can just use the backspace key to backspace over the file extension and call it whatever you want, really. I'm just going to rename the file's extension to original so that I can remember this is the original file that came with the game. Press enter and at the confirmation prompt that appears, click yes. This will change the file name to whatever you chose. We're going to replace this with a file name of the same name and extension in just a moment. The next file you're looking for is called SWARC 
game.upk. It's this file shown here. Just like you did with the other UPK file, left click on the file name once, wait a moment, and then click again. Go all the way over to the right, backspace over UPK, and name it whatever you want. Again, I'm gonna call it original. Press the enter key, and at the prompt that appears, select yes to lock in this change. With the file extensions renamed, I'll take this window and then drag and drop it over to the right side of the screen and then snap it into place. Now all you've got to do is just take the two files that were in that patches folder and drag and drop them right into the folder where you just renamed the extensions on those two files. These files are named the exact same things as the ones you just renamed. They just have the proper extensions. Now that you have the patch files copied over, you can just close out all of the open windows of File Explorer because you're not going to need them anymore. In fact, if you have TechnoParrot already running, you can just go right back into TechnoParrot by maximizing the window by navigating back down to the taskbar and clicking on the TechnoParrot icon. Cool. Now head back over to Launch Game on the bottom right corner of the window and click on it. And this time the game will not only be running in full screen mode, but shaped properly for your flat panel monitor. But what about those light gun games you asked? Didn't you say you were going to show me how to play light gun games without a light gun? Absolutely. And here's how it's done. First of all, you'll need to add a light gun game to your library. So go up to the hamburger in the top left corner and pick add game. In this case, I'm going to add Star Trek Voyager. So just like before, it's a matter of just scrolling through the list of games that are available in the emulator until you find the one you're looking for. In this case, Star Trek Voyager. Click on the game once you find it. And then once you see the icon on the right side of the screen, click on add game underneath the icon. The same things apply with adding the executable file, making a decision about free play and not using windowed mode, but it's the input that's different. You'll see a drop down right here. And one of the options that you can pick is Windows mouse cursor. And I think you'll probably want to use that because one, it's very accurate. And two, you probably have a mouse. Then you can map out other controls for the game of your choice by clicking on the space underneath each of the lines and selecting a button to do things like start the game, fire, or in this case, reload or remodulate your phaser. Once you have things set to your liking, click on save settings in the bottom right corner. Come down to launch game and click on it, and you'll be on your way to fighting off the Borg onslaught in no time at all. As it turns out, resistance isn't futile after all, and neither is learning how to play your favorite Nintendo Switch games in emulation through the power of Ryu Jinx. Check out this video shown on screen to learn how it's done.